before today's episode of Isaac Reviews 2022, I'd like to make a quick announcement. Originally, I was going to do a review on Halloween Ends, but I ended up scrapping it due to technical difficulties. I guess I'll just do a quick sort of review of it before this one, so here we go. Halloween Ends is garbage. 2 out of 10, don't watch it. With that said, hey everyone, this is Isaac here, and welcome back to Isaac Reviews 2022. And today's review is actually for DC's Black Adam. Before we get started though, I guess I should bring up the elephant the size of Jupiter in the room regarding its distributor, Warner Bros, and its parent company, Warner Bros Discovery. Oh boy, where do I begin with Warner Bros. Discovery? In just under a few months, they've already become the Activision Blizzard of the film industry. I've already made two videos on them, and in that time, they've merged Cartoon Network with Warner Bros. Animation, they've tried to shut down an entire studio area that specializes in diversity, and they gave Final Space a tax write-off and yet they can't even fire Ezra Miller despite how they're a proven criminal. But anyways, here we are now with one of the only movies they have enough money to squeeze out this year, Black Adam. And before I go on, I'll go on record and say that I'm not going to let WBDs and David Zaslav's corrupt practices determine my opinion on this movie. It's best to separate art from its artists after all, so I'll be reviewing this with a completely open mind. Anyways, before it came out, Black Adam was marketed as this huge, game-changing movie for the DC Extended Universe, which, with the exception of The Suicide Squad, has a track record of its movies being either pretty decent or absolutely horrible. Oh yeah, and the movie also stars The Rock as the titular anti-hero, and... Hey, wait a second, wasn't he already in a DC movie this year? Eh, never mind. So, let's get back on track now. Going off the trailers, I thought Black Adam looked... okay. I didn't think it'd be as big a deal as its promotional material made it out to be, and I was definitely reassured of this with the film's underwhelming critical reception but I still wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt, so I gave it a watch, and what I think of it. Well, uh, this isn't gonna make me too many friends, but, well, I kinda enjoyed it. Yeah, that's pretty surprising, given how it's generally not very enjoyed, and how I only have, like, two or three movies I like that most people hated, but this was a pretty good movie in my eyes. Heck, I'd even say it's in my top three DCEU movies. And why is that? Well, first, let's explain why it's only in my top three and not any higher. Now, I will admit that in terms of writing, it's pretty played out and formulaic. I mean, I love the concept of a superhero movie focused on a morally gray character, but in terms of writing, it's very poorly paced and lacks any interesting or meaningful world building outside of a huge exposition dump in the first 10 minutes. This also leads to the villain being very underwhelming and having no clear motivation or development beyond the fact that he's evil. And before we move on to what saved the movie, there's one quality about it that I can't gloss over. The editing is absolutely horrible. Seriously, there were so many fast cuts during the action scenes that I felt like I was gonna throw up. Maybe this is just a me thing since I personally can't stand fast cuts in editing similar to how I hate unnecessary shaky camera work but the editing in this movie was just woeful. But with all that said and done, I still think there's some merit to be found in Black Adam, especially with the visuals. I mean, a lot of superhero movies nowadays are known for having absolutely terrible visual effects with only a handful of exceptions, so it's good to see this one break the mold by having some fantastic special effects, coupled with some great cinematography and production design, and a phenomenal score from the immensely talented Lorne Balfe. 
One other thing that was one of the main marketing points in Black Adam is that Dwayne Johnson stars as the titular anti-hero, and this is definitely one of the best performances in his career. Truth be told, I don't think The Rock is a bad actor per se. He is a very overexposed actor, sure, and a lot of what he stars in ends up being pretty below average, but if he's given some decent materials to work with, he can be a good actor. And this definitely applies to his performance here in Black Adam, where he's able to combine his signature charm with a more stoic and gritty character. The other characters were... Fine, I guess. I enjoyed Cyclone in this movie, although it's kinda uncanny how much she looks like Carly from The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Hawkman was a good balance to Teth Adams' more Machiavellian forms of justice, and I really liked Dr. Fate, and Pierce Brosnan's performance was great, but I already mentioned that the villain Sobek was very underwhelming. The kid character Amon wasn't all that likable, although I guess I should have expected that since I usually hate kid characters in movies, and Adam Smasher could get pretty annoying as the film's quirky and quippy comic relief, and it gave me some very unfavorable flashbacks to The Flash in Justice League. Still not sure why Warner Bros. hasn't cancelled his movie since his actor is a proven criminal, but I digress. Anyways, in conclusion, in spite of its shortcomings, Black Adam was still a pretty good movie in my eyes. The writing and villain were pretty weak, and the editing was some of the worst I've ever seen in a major motion picture, but I liked most of the performances, especially from Dwayne Johnson, Aldous Hodge, and Pierce Brosnan. The visual effects were amazing, there were some solid production values, the score was awesome, and the action scenes were a blast to watch outside of how bad the editing was. I'm not entirely sure who to recommend this to since, as previously mentioned, critics haven't been taking too kindly to this movie. Maybe fans of DC or The Rock might find some value in this, but if you hate the DCEU or you aren't too crazy about The Rock, you won't be missing too much. This is just my opinion after all, and I had a good time with this movie, so I think that's all that matters. I'd give it a 7 out of 10, and yet, it's still one of the best DCEU movies to date, which really says something about the franchise's quality if you ask me. Next time, I'll be reviewing Wendell and Wild, and I am really excited for this one. We got two incredibly talented people working on it with both Henry Selleck and Jordan Peele, and I'm a huge sucker for stop motion animation, so I'm sure I'll have a good time with this one. Anyways, thanks for watching this episode of Isaac Reviews 2022. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!